It's... Um, All right, we are now recording. Please go ahead. Wonderful. Shall we start at the top with GitOps Working Group? Where I did have a little bit of a uh, conversation with Alexis about this right at the beginning when he was first proposing it. I think the main thing here is they wanted a neutral place for a bunch of companies to collaborate. And if that isn't what the sandbox is for, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I spoke to him the other day and it was like, it's very much that they want to make sure that the working group produces stuff that might live longer than the working group, which might not potentially last for that long in the end, but they want somewhere to collaborate that's ongoing past that and maintain the things. I think it's a great initiative. Um, I'm just thinking that, do you think it will be a confusion with a, with a naming working group? Like we have working groups as, as entities in TOC in CNCF. And now it's a pro like, kind of like a project name, initiative name in Sandbox. I, I think it's probably all right now, but if the working group shuts down and they just maintain the project, it probably needs a different name. That's not working group then, but at the moment there, it's the, it's the out, it's the It's like a standard the output. Right? But yeah, I don't know. It is a good point. I don't love the name, but I don't want that to be a reason to say no. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, Chris is saying as long as working groups don't own code, it should be fine. Generally, do they have code or a project that they want to check in? It's a good question. I don't think so. I think it's more documentation. I yeah, I think at the moment it's for the contents of the working group repo under that's under Flux CD. Yeah, but it would potentially have. Um, outputs of the working group after that yeah I mean, can we create a papers, oh, go ahead son uh, i was wondering if we could create a, a repo under the toc org like other work groups yeah they've actually moved it to a a, a github organization yeah. called GitOps working group yeah. We don't really care where the working group or project lives as long as it's a neutral independent org. Yeah. I wonder if we should just say yes and then say, hey, this might cause confusion with other working groups that are part of SIGs. So if you were able to think of another name. Does that sound? I think it's fair. Uh, I'm just wondering if, you know, the fact that it's not a project doesn't necessarily have, you know, code yet. Um, and it's a working group. We have a lot of working groups. We have a lot of SIGs. If we just move it to wherever the SIGs or, or working groups live today, it, it would yeah, be less confusing. Maybe this speaks to a slightly broader problem of, um, you know, sort of bureaucracy potentially getting in the way of just people getting on and doing work. So I think when they set this up, um, you know, they had four or five different companies who wanted to get involved and wanted to get on and work. And I think they just didn't want to go through the rigmarole of a SIG and all, you know, they were like, we just need a, just need a GitHub repo and we could just get on with it. Um, I don't know whether that says something about the way SIGs are managed. Um, I guess, should we just say yes to this and then have a separate conversation that isn't during this call about what we do with working groups and SIGs, but move on yeah. to other voting now? That sounds like a good yeah. idea. Yeah. All right. So let's put in the chat votes, unless anyone has any other questions, votes for GitOps working group. Oh, hang on. I've put a note in here that they do actually have their own um, uh, repo over under SIG app delivery. I don't know if they, that's me or not. They are both a working group and a project is the plan, not one or the other. Got it. Okay. So, because I was a bit, I was, that's why I asked Alexis back, because I was confused, is this a working group or a, or a project? And he said both, because they want to have artifacts that outlive the working group. Yeah. 
All right. Okay. Have we got enough? Not yet. I'm at five. Okay. That's five without including Michelle, who voted before you Six. asked her votes. Ah, excellent. That passes. Thank you. Yeah, is that enough for? Yes, we can move on. Righty. -o. So next up is Piraeus Data Store. Uh, so it's like a um, it's like a gateway uh, to the Linbit projects to install them easily easily on Kubernetes. So they've put like uh, uh, similar projects like Longhorn and Rook. Um, I don't think like they're exactly like Longhorn because Longhorn is like the entity that contains everything. Here it's like it's it's enablement for Linbit projects. I guess it's more similar to Rook. Is Linbit a company? Limbit is a company, yeah, and they have like their projects are open source, but they're a part of CNCF. Saad, so, do you have any opinion about this? I've certainly, I mean, I've certainly known uh, Limbit and DRBD for a long time. I some I until I saw this project, I haven't. I, surprisingly, I haven't. Uh, uh, you know, I haven't encountered it in the Kubernetes ecosystem. I'm a little surprised given how 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 famous uh, DRBD was. Yeah, they uh, worked, Linbit was involved with the open source uh, Kubernetes side for a while. Um, beyond that, I'm not too familiar with them. Uh, this idea of having a operator for deploying uh, deploying their, their uh, application seems fine. I think it'll be more interesting if they ever intend to go into incubation. We have an outstanding question, I think, right now of what we want to do with storage systems in general, that'll come up here. Um, also, I, I have a recollection we have talked before or hesitated before about operators, whether an operator is in itself sufficiently interesting as a project. You know, it's just an operator. It's not really, it's just kind of glue, isn't it? It's also a CSI driver, it says as well. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I think I think it thing. depends on what the operator does, you know, if because if people follow the pattern and then create something quite, you know, quite significant, it's probably it's probably okay. But do we want CNCF projects for operators for essentially every bit of software out there? No, I don't know. If there's a Postgres operator, what would we, I don't know, that it... I mean, I would actually, I, when you were, Liz, when you were mentioning that, like MySQL Postgres was exactly what came to my mind. I mean, in fact, if, mm -hmm. if it is actually a good one that, that you know, you don't need, uh, that's what the DBA does, uh, <laughs> I would think that that actually would be very valuable. I think I, I, I completely agree that it would be valuable and it would be a good example of an operator. I'm just wondering, no, like there okay, could be a okay. thousand operators. Maybe we I know, need a whole that's... other kind of category of project for operators. It just feels like. But isn't, isn't I mean, a, a, if our goal is to foster you know, adoption of Kubernetes, get more. Yeah, I, I would think that would be a great thing if there are actually good operators that could bring popular workloads you know, on top of Kubernetes. And 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 I, to be honest, some of these operators, if they, operators just a pattern, right? So so depending on 
how much business logic goes into it. And if they're so sophisticated, they could easily dwarf <laughs> some of the platform components. So I, don't, I guess I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not clear. Are they saying? And, yeah. and to be clear, it, Sorry, it no. seems like it's more than just uh, uh, an operator in this case. It looks like it's the CSI driver and other components as well. Yeah, so they're saying everything under this Piraeus data store uh, organization. A few yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. Uh, okay, that, is, that does seem a bit more. And do we know anything about how this compares to some of the other? No, I just, but, you know, I, again, if I want to, uh, you know, I think the, I think Lin, Limbit and DRBD, I mean, that those are really, really credible software. That's, that's yeah. open source software. So they've been around. Yeah, I'd, I'd say again, like I have no objections for moving this to Sandbox. We have a number of CSI drivers in uh, Eve and the Kubernetes repo. Um, I think it's the, the question will be if they want to move any of these individual projects to an incubation level. They do also have under why do you want to contribute your project it does it talks about increasing the visibility of the project to attract more users and contributors does it already have like a community uh, you know is there a community around it or is it kind of One, pro one company's project. Not that that necessarily has to be a gate for sandbox, but do we think it's it's there to be a community project? I, I, I mean, so far it's clearly just a limb, limbit project, but, uh, but you know, again, the limbit stuff is very popular. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they have a decent sized ecosystem, like Sheng said. Probably so. more pop. I mean, they're they're at a different scale. They're they're smaller <laughs> deployments, but I would even claim it's perhaps more popular than Ceph, for example. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, a sandbox, you could probably assume, you know, good intentions here and then maybe scrutinize them a little bit more in incubation about, you know, multi-vendor um, yeah. aspects. Okay. Shall we take it to a vote? Uh, Michelle was a plus one. I don't know if you already saw that. That passes. We can move on. Thank you. These two cloud query submissions, are they? Do you think it's just the second one is an updated version of the first one? I think so. Consider them together, please.
Uh, it's basically a one person project. There's a few other people who have one or two commits, but it's oh, been like six other people, but it's very small. The repository was created last year, end of last year, so it's relatively new. But it's end of 2020. Yeah, it seems to be active. But yeah, one one person contributing mostly. I kind of feel like it's um, uh, for the future. Maybe uh, we can introduce a, an extra column for when the GitHub repository was created. Like I always derive this information myself <laughs> uh, via APIs. Um, I feel like that would be useful. Sounds like a good idea to me. I mean, it just strikes me as being too new to know if it's got any traction and doesn't have any, doesn't give us any compelling reason why it needs to be in Sandbox to get more traction. Like it's been asked, you know, people said they won't collaborate on this. Yeah. It's, I'm struggling a little bit to see how this would be at this stage, definitely, you know, why would we recommend this over a Cloud Custodian, for example? When they say, focus more on questions and monitor, less on actions. More focused on actions. Yeah, it does feel a bit early to me. All right, um, do we want to go to a vote? I'm personally a no, I, I think it's a it's too early, too soon, not compelling that it needs to be in sandbox. I didn't realize we could be live, so of course we can. <laughs> All right, um, that's probably enough that it doesn't pass, I guess. You can move on. Um, I see a note on the next one, Wei Zhang, Amy, it said email for corrections, is that? Uh, he never got back to me and um, the challenge is that he put his name instead of the project name and it's not exceptionally clear, so. The repository is empty, like there are no PRs, no issues. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a, again, it's a single person project since last September. Seems yeah. way too early. Yeah, this is definitely not ready. Okay, uh, what should I call it? Calabash? So it's Calabash. Tuna Lang. Also a one person project that's very new. Um, oh, it says it has two contributors, but they're actually the same person. <laughs> also, also November the 15th. And they actually position themselves. So the, the goal is of Tuna Lang is to flatten the learning curve with existing CNCF projects by intentionally bundling them behind the language interface. Uh, but if you look at the repository, like there is no example of uh, such integration with any of the cloud native projects. I'm just curious of what they mean by that. 
it just seems very, very early. It's yeah. very yeah. rough. Yeah. It's one more project that got created in November last year. Minus two. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, typo. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean that. All right. Uh, I, will, I wonder if we should establish some sort of like min time, like min lifespan, like your GitHub repo needs to be at least a year old or something. Well, we, we're, we're, we're letting in the GitHub's working group, which is... Well, that's a working group though, right? Well, but if it was a project, I mean, if, if Microsoft and Amazon and Google came together and said, we want to build a project for... Tuna Lang, <laughs> we need a neutral place. We'd kind of go, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, also, I guess, also, I, guess I, so. I guess it could also be that someone takes some proprietary software, let's just say it's really good and, and put it on GitHub. It might be relatively young, but might have years of development behind it. So it's multiple factors, right? It's not just an Yeah. I guess I guess what I'm what I'm what I'm saying is while well, that is all very true and possible, I suspect that we're gonna be effectively dealing with more not quite spam but then we are going to be dealing with the uh, opposite problem but I, i'm just wondering maybe just a fact then rather than a hard hard guideline like yeah. we generally expect you know one of or three of the following six you know like multi large corporation collaboration pre-existing user base or you know a year's worth of evidence of contributions or so I, I don't know I mean, it feels like yeah. there's some me mechanistic stuff that we could do here to filter with it that would save us time i, I mean the, the the one to be honest I, I don't know if we're willing to do that but the one i like the most is some kind of a user adoption you know if we could even if it's subjective that would exclude a lot of projects yeah, I mean, I don't know how good of a metric it is, but even things like stars, forks, or number of people watching, is it, it's not user adoption, but it's like a mediocre proxy metric for that. And a few of these are at zero on some of those. Yeah, yeah. although it's also a game, gameable. Yeah, that people can game. Or something like that. Uh, That's the thing. But I do, I do you wonder say, if like, we're looking for projects to have a certain number of these things, people achieve those things and then kind of go, you have to let me in now. Well, no, that's... No, and I, I wouldn't put it as a record. I, it's a, it's necessary, but not sufficient. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Some guidelines about, yeah, some of the, and I wanted, these are the kind to, of things we're looking for. Yeah. To Shane's point, maybe, um, I mean, maybe requesting testimonials from two users or something as part of the form, you know, at least force somebody to go find somebody who's willing to write like a three pair, three sentences about why it's cool or something. I like that idea. Actually, yeah. And if it was about looking for a neutral collaboration space, that could be, you know, okay, we don't have this yet, but, uh, you know, two yeah. other organizations want to come together and get involved. Yeah. Because it's always yeah, at some stage, it's always hard to find developers, collaborators, you know, contributors, but at least they can find some users. Anyway, something to think about. I don't want to derail, but just something okay. that, that occurs to me as a way of like getting a some sort of filter on here so that we don't. Because I, I I definitely feel like we're we're, we're visiting some here where we're just really sure that we're not going to push them through and they seem way too early or whatever. Yeah. All right. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, Amy, do you want to think about how we could phrase something like that? Or should we maybe try and think up some examples of how we could do that offline? Yeah, I'm a little concerned that the form is going to get a little too long. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't add things. So we'll take this Yeah, offline. we have like an FAQ about some of these yeah. points. Um, yeah. I believe we're on Cube Invaders, yes? Cube Invaders. Excellent, thank you. I mean, there's something quite appealing about anything based on space invaders. This is super cute, like major cute points here. Seems like a fun project. It's based on a um, games framework called Default, which has a license that I'm just trying to read, but. Uh, 
I'm just trying to, which is a non-commercial license. So I, I'm, I would, I'm really unsure about this. I mean, it's like, so it's based on a, a, a um, it's based on a game engine with a non-open source license. Yeah, we'd have to take a look at it. Yeah, I'm a little bit familiar with the default folks. Um, so do we want to check that out first and then if, the, if it's okay, yep. come back for another vote or come back for a vote? If it's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do some research on 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 my end. Maybe they can move to another uh, engine. Hmm. All righty, we'll leave that to you, Chris. Yeah. Curie fence. November twenty twenty. But more contributors, but still very recent. I mean, their website looks super fancy. It's a new application security platform. I think Matt Klein was working. <clears throat> with with them, so Matt knows a little bit more because I think they're using Envoy uh, filters as part of their solution. Yeah, it talks about extending Envoy proxy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. Did did you get the impression that he's positive about it? Uh, I think so, um, but I don't want to speak uh, on on mm -hmm. his behalf. They have his picture and a quote from him on their website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as well as Chris from Cisco and this guy James from eBay. So if we're looking for a couple of users to say something, they did that on their website sure. for whatever that's worth. If it's super Envoy specific, should it be like an Envoy sub project if it's a plugin or something? It seems very security specific, which I don't think would fit into the Envoy oh. very yeah. that well. Yeah. They, they, they tend not to host all the filters within the Envoy project itself. So it's a web, uh, web security firewall, right? That's, yeah, that's interesting. I, I, don't, I don't know, are there any other uh, uh, web security firewalls in our space here? Web not application that. firewall, sorry. Not, so, not that I know of. WAF. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Look at that and why they want to contribute. Uh, that's interesting. They're wanting to, I think they mean assure users that Curie Fence isn't going to do the elastic <laughs> license change maneuver. That's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, I mean, unlike the other recent, very recent projects, it does have a whole lot of people equally contributing, which is encouraging, not just one person. Yeah. And do we think they all come from, well, I guess they could come from, they could come from the same organization and just, you know, it's, Right, well, should we go to a vote? Spell it right, you know what I mean. That passes, we can move on. Are 
there two different Athens? There's Athens with an S that's like a go. These, I think these folks present, they did not present. I mean, they, um, this is a submission that came back. Correct. Right. This is a reapply. Yeah. Okay. Like from Yahoo, or if I recall, maybe Yahoo yes, Japan. Yes, Yahoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did we tell them last time? We had a question around Spiffy Spire, um, and yep. they addressed that. Oh, yeah. How is Athens different to Spire? See this one last time? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's a reapply. Gotcha. And do you all remember what the um, what the gap was? I, if I recall, the TOC just wanted to understand how does this differ from Spiffy Spire and if it potentially integrates with with that. I think that was the what summary. Was yeah, it's it's used widely in production at and Yahoo and its related companies, as far as I know. Yeah, so it looks like it's kind of compatible with, you know, it's an alternative to Spire. And it looks like they've kind of concentrated on some of the more kind of enterprisey features like uh, tenancy support, I guess, like multi tenancy. There's a UI. It does support some interop with Spiffy because it has support Spiffy X509 IDs as well. So. It's got it's just got some overlap. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. And uh... You know, if it's used in production somewhere like Verizon, that's a big old deployment. Any other comments or should we move to a vote? All right, let's get votes. We can move on. Cube OVN. Chris, you've dropped something in chat. Um, context or explainer, just, really? I think that, yeah, just reference for people interested. Okay. It's been a while since I've come across OVN, mostly in the OpenStack days.
So that I can see a co contrast against calico, and I can see, oh, sorry, a comparison against calico, and I can see this project compared against OVN Kubernetes. Comes from an open virtual networking organization. Hmm. How active is the OVM community these days? I wonder. I think it's still used fairly widely. I just don't know how active. I. <laughs> And there's clearly a lot here. Okay. Open V switch is still still kicking around. Yeah, find a neutral place for better adoption and community collaboration. Is this I feel like I'm getting rapidly out of my depth here, but if we adopt something like that, is it overlapping with that kind of OVN world in a way that... No, I mean, this is a CNI implementation, right? This is a driver. Yeah. Yep. It's basically yeah. all it is to... To work with Open vSwitch and so on. Comes from Aluda, which uh, who with, did Alibaba buy them? I'm trying to remember who or ByteDance. Do you remember Sheng by any chance? I think they're I think they're independent. Oh, I mean, okay. I've sworn they were purchased. Let me see. Maybe you'll. Have Tencent, I'm trying to. Someone bought them, I just don't remember who. Another Chinese company. I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at their website. It's still, you're still a member of CNCF. I mean. Yeah, I know, I'm trying to remember. Looks, looks independent to me. And not, not, not bad if they're acquired. Looks independent to me. <laughs> I mean, it looks like you know the team has people from lots of different companies. Oh yeah, maybe Aluda. I'm confusing them with Kai Cloud. That was picked up by ByteDance. Right, I was bought by by dance. Yep, yep. Yeah, I wonder whether this is. Like how actively actively is it being, you know, is this something that's going to take off or is this going to be, you know, a bridge to the past, I suppose, is my worry. I mean, they're fairly, if you look at their releases, they've been pretty good, pretty consistent, at least compared to the other OVN. I don't think OpenV switch is just going to go away suddenly overnight or anything. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's gonna stick around for a while. Yeah. Any other comments or should we do votes?
It's not going to let me sell it. as we can move on. Okay. K8 dash. Is this indeed as in the recruitment people? So. That is correct. Optimised for mobile. Oh, Joel Kubernetes clusters on the go. Also, a relatively new, uh, relatively new project. I'm looking at the um, at the top commuters. Oh no, it's March 31st, 2019. So it's been a while. So I guess I have a, a concern around naming, uh, since Kubernetes has a Kubernetes dashboard called. Kubernetes dashboard. This may end up getting confusing. Yeah. Agreed. It's it's not had a lot of work. I mean, it, like it's like the top committer has ten commits. It's like a, um, <laughs> it's just it's, it's not clear how much. Very big commits. <laughs> <laughs> But mm, 10 commits with 436 lines of code, not really even very big commits. Uh, Number three makes up for it though. Yeah, that 109,009 vendoring commit. <laughs> <laughs> I always try and be the person who takes that code out myself, so I get the negative scores. <laughs> But I, I mean, I think the combination of age and the amount of activity paints an interesting picture, given that it's not super new. It's March 2019, at least with from the contributor page. But nobody has a lot of commits, and there are months like the stretch between July and January looks pretty dead altogether. So I don't know how active or how much of a like growth future this has. I wonder like what the story is like, is this maybe an internal project that they mm. moved over? Is that why there's just one very, very large um, commit? I'd really like to understand more. Look at the, if you look at the GitHub tree in master, uh, it, it shows 300 commits and um, some of them are merged. Some of them are coming from like the users that are not a part of GitHub. Like uh, mm -hmm. seems like there is more, but yeah, there is a, the majority of the activity starts around October last year. Before that, that was pretty idle. Uh, maybe it was not on GitHub and most of the committers just don't have GitHub accounts. Possibly, yeah, yeah that, that, that would explain. That makes a lot more sense than looking Lo looks at Looks like the, an internal Indeed project that yeah. they maybe flipped a bit on. 
Uh, yeah, that makes a lot, that makes more sense because it's yeah, it's actually much more active than. I'm gonna guess that the Kubernetes project don't well. Should we ask Kubernetes if they're concerned about having multiple dashboards? Like it's a good idea. It's it's also the very first dashboard project that wants to join CNCF. We don't have anything else. Yeah. I don't know if we should ask right. I mean, it definitely feel like the dashboard project was like explicitly forked out and said people said we don't actually want this, which seems to sort of imply that like let many flowers bloom as long as it's not in our space. So where does it live now? Is it uh well I mean I think it's still in the remit, still be in the repo, but it was like I I think that like it was sort of everybody said, Hey, this thing is not we're not fully confident yeah. in the security of this thing and like so I think it's there sort of for historical reasons, but I don't think it was, I think it was sort of explicitly unendorsed at some level. Mm. And there's other dashboards out there, right? VMware has Octant. I think there's people have built a ton of these things. Well, the, the clouds have all built their own too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess if they want to contribute it. That's even got Hacktoberfest. Should we do votes for this? Can we put in a yes with a please rename or something like that? <laughs> something less do, generic. Do you think we definitely yeah. want them to rename or do we want to uh, ask Kubernetes if they have a concern? I, I, I'm just thinking I, from like an end user perspective since there's already a, a Kubernetes yeah. dashboard. Great. Can we make it clear that this is something new and different? Yeah, I'd, I'd ask him to rename personally. Okay. Shall I do votes for Kubernetes K8 dash subject to rename? Yeah. Sounds good. <gasps> Justin, we made it. Hey, good. So exciting. <laughs> What's this Docker distribution thing about then? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's been languishing in Docker, so, and everyone has their own forks of it. So, I've basically invited, we've now appointed maintainers from GitLab and GitHub and Harbor and DigitalOcean um, who are all using it in production. So, Hopefully we can kind of unfork, un unfork it all and get people contributing again by moving it to NCF. So, um, um, and I was planning to move it to apply for incubation pretty soon because it's a you know it's a six year old project that is in yeah. production use everywhere. Definitely used. Yeah. yeah. Do we? How do we feel about the name? I we don't have a we don't and it, it needs a new org name because it hasn't got its own yep. org but I, and I have no idea but I I kind of tried to think about renaming it I kind of like distribution for historical reasons now because it's always been called that and I kind of come around to it because I was thinking like it's a totally new name but I I think maybe an org name that's like fairer like um you know something about registry or something might be good but. Um, I kind of, but I, I'm not really attached. I mean, if, if the maintainers want to rename it or if anyone wants to rename it, I don't mind. But, you know, it's always been distribution. It's kind of the people who use it know it as distribution and OCI and things. So. True. It's but, got a community around it, I think, isn't it? Any other comments? Seems like a great addition. Very cool. Right, that passes. <laughs> Distribu distribution D, like yeah. Uh, D. <laughs> I was thinking yeah. of ideas for you, Justin. Yeah, yeah that's, that's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> cool. cool. I think that's it.
Anything All right. we need to discuss Amazing. as far as part. Otherwise, I can turn the recording off. Yeah. We're in the midst of TOC elections. That's about it. The only other thing on my agenda. Yeah. Should we, um, I think we could stop the recording. Do we want to yeah. just take a couple of minutes to go 